IWC releases an all-new engineer, their take on the luxury sports watch from the 1970s. We're visiting the brand in their manufacture and headquarters to take a closer look at the new watches and to talk to Christian Knoop, the brand's chief design officer. Now, I guess you all know that the luxury sports watch has become immensely popular in the last few years. We're talking about the luxury sports watch with a steel case and an integrated steel bracelet. And back in the 1970s, IWC also had one and it was designed by none other than Gerald Genta. Of course, I'm talking about the Engineer SL reference 1832 from 1976. However, the Engineer packs something extra compared to the vast majority of luxury sports watches, as it was originally designed as a watch to withstand magnetism, so a proper purpose-built timekeeper. And today IWC revisits this icon with the Engineer 40. There are three steel versions, and there's one with a titanium case that comes with a grey dial, lovely monochrome. And inside, the Excalibur 32111, featuring the IWC pole winding system and a five-day power reserve when fully wound. The movement is protected from magnetism by a soft iron inner case like most engineers since the very first model from 1955. Let's find out more about this watch and if it lives up to the expectations. Hi Christian, thank you for taking the time to explain us the new engineer. Um, can you tell us about the importance of the engineer and especially also its role within the IWC collection? Thanks uh, Frank, thanks for having me. Uh, yes, the engineer is, is a product which is very important for the IWC brand in terms of, of radiating exactly the values the brand stands for in terms of fine engineering and, and timeless and at the same time forward-looking design. Uh, the Ingenieur is the only collection that has been continuously in the product portfolio since 1955. And uh, it, despite uh, its, its collection size, really is very important for us in terms of product next to the three big collections, Pilots, Portuguesa and Portofino. Because it represents something that, that we can't cover with any other collection and where we believe that the integrated steel is a complementary product offer that uh, we need in our portfolio. Can you describe us briefly the watch? The Ingenieur collection has a long history as you, as you might know. It started in 1955 with a very, um, very avant-garde technical concept, very forward-looking in terms of technical capabilities, taking our instrument watch expertise with soft iron inner case into a civilian watch, featuring the first automatic movement from the reference 66. Yes, the triple six uh, from 1955. And the achievement of, of Gerald Genta when he touched the engineer design in uh, the 70s was really to give this very forward-looking technical assets a matching design in the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So to give exactly this progressive, very futuristic look that would match actually what the whole technology of the watch is about. So what we saw over the decades after was that this design was so powerful that it was evolved in different generations mm -hmm. and has survived different generations. So what Gerald Genta did in the past was basically doing more than just a watch. He, he formulated a design code, a DNA, that would survive decades. So our approach now is to take these design codes mm -hmm. and make a 21st century engineer out of it. So we carefully analyzed what his initial codes were about, about the shape of the case, the very characteristic ring, the, the very powerful and clean dial, and created a small collection consisting of four references in 40 millimeter size um, that would give a contemporary design interpretation on the design DNA of Gerald Genta. So we're now presenting three steel watches, stainless steel with different dial, dial colors, silver, black, and a new color we call aqua, it's a kind of blue-green. Mm -hmm. And the fourth reference is a titanium watch, titanium grade 5, uh, with a matching dial color, black hands and black appliques. 
all these watches have been completely reworked in terms of their technical content, their movement, we will touch on this a bit later, and also their overall volumes and the finishing. Revisiting an iconic IWC and especially a Genta design must be quite a challenge. How did you approach this? I mean, every new collection we get our hands on is, is based on, on pieces that have been there in the past as, as 300 watches typically, and we try to find a balance between the heritage and something that would look into the future that still surprises our customers with something new. So this balance between the past, the design DNA of a particular collection, be it pilots, be it Portuguese or be it ingenieur, uh, uh, in, in combination with a couple of new ideas is the essence of every new collection. It has a, a more challenging flavor, I have to admit, if, if a if a well-known personality like Gerard Genta uh, stands behind that. So, so to touch a design that was, was created by him has a special meaning to us because Gerard Genta, next to be a, a design genius, was probably the person who also became the hero for watch designers in general and uh, for the profession of a watch designer because he was not only only creating wonderful watches, but he for the first time gave the watch designer a face. Before that, all the, the watch brands were featuring watchmakers, but actually the designer pretty much worked in the background. Mm -hmm. And, and Gerard Genta uh, was very vocal about his work, uh, his dedication, and also the enormous brands, including his own ones, he, he, uh, he built with his, his designs and, and uh, yeah, formulated uh, a kind of prototype, a uh, kind of role model for the watch designer. So obviously working on, on something he has initially created is a very touchy sub subject for us. Yeah, can imagine. Ergonomics are really important with a steel sports watch with an integrated bracelet. How did you optimize the ergonomics in this case? Yes, we, we have to see that actually there's, there's a couple of, of changes we did to the historic design. The 1832 is a wonderful watch with very recognizable lines. What we were reworking both the, the entire ergonomics, the entire case proportions. We found a new solution for the five holes on the bezel. Mm -hmm. We recreated the dial aesthetics, uh, reworked the finishings added the crown protection. So there's a couple of elements we, we adjusted in the new design. So one very important part was the ergonomics in general, because the historic watch was called Jumbo, but it also was a very large, very thick watch with, um, uh, with a very long lug distance and a very wide attachment. Mm -hmm. So main part is also to adjust the proportions to shorten the lug distance and to, to reduce the, 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 the width of the, uh, the attachment. But also the entire attachment has been completely reworked while the historic one was featuring a kind of fixed nose, so to speak, where the, mm -hmm. the bracelet was, was linked. We now have a kind of flexible middle link, which allows a more fluent transition from the watch case into the bracelet and helps the variability, especially on smaller wrists. If you want, we can also talk about the fact that, that part of the, the ergonomic review was also to decide for a butterfly clasp uh, yeah. on the backside uh, that would allow to sit in the center of the wrist and allow also to, uh, to wear this clasp on different wrist sizes and, and at the same time have a very clean finishing with, mm -hmm. uh, with the, the cover of that, that clasp um, from the outside. Well, personally, I would have loved to see a, a micro adjustment, a fine adjustment or something to have just a little bit of stretch. Would that have been possible or? We looked at prototypes with a fine adjustment system and I think RBC has a very powerful uh, and, and, and very good system there at hand. Yeah. But still, this, this cover for the system where you would cover the travel of the, of the bracelet mm -hmm. uh, is quite, quite big. And it would jeopardize the, the purity and the, and the clean lines of that ingenieur. So in the, end, in the end, we decided for simplicity and purity and left out the fine adjustment system. Okay. However, people will still have the opportunity to fine adjust because we have 
um, not only standard links but there's also a kind of 1.5 uh, size link in there so you can 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 play with the links to to fit this perfectly to your rest and uh, the way to uh, to take out links is that still in the old way with it's the, still the little magic, push button magic system with the two uh, That's two pins yeah. super easy to work even at home w without any technical knowledge so should be yeah, yeah it's good well, as suggested by the name, the engineer, it's, it had technicality in mind already since the beginning. What are the technicalities specifically for this watch? I mean, I would start with the movement because um, the new Ingenieur 40mm features one of the most recent automatic movements from IWC. It's a caliber 32111. Um, our manufacturing uh, movement, so this movement uh, went into the watch together with a soft iron inner case, which makes a link to the very first engineer. The soft iron inner case always have been one of the signature elements of, of engineer watches uh, for magnetic protection. And um, around that, we built a very elaborate case. So the case construction as such is a kind of absolutely engineering marvel. Uh, because it's a, it's a three-piece construction with a, with a slightly curved um, uh, center ring, uh, which allows a better wrist or a better fit on your wrist. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the case back, which is closed due to the anti-magnetic case. And you have the bezel, which we had completely re-engineered. The historic bezel features five bores and was screwed like a kind of gem jug. Um, but now we wanted to, to maintain the technical functionality, but we wouldn't accept actually the misorientation of these five bores of the historic one. Because we had a long debate about this. Some people believe that it gives a lot of character if every watch is, is different. But the reality is that, that you not only have completely different orientations of bores, but you can also have the situation where it's just three or five degrees off. And this was, for me as a designer, the, the, the situation I w was not able to accept. And mm -hmm. therefore, we had to find, a, find another solution to still have the, uh, the bezel functional. So we're now working with screws in these, in these holes. So it's uh, hexagonal screws which underpin or underline a little bit the technical functionality and uh, give this bezel a function. And uh, this entire construction uh, is uh, waterproof for 10 bars, 100 meter. Uh, so this makes the, the engineer a proper sports watch. The new model shows a lot of craftsmanship. Can you tell us more about the finishing and, uh, and the craftsmanship that went into this watch? Yes, absolutely. I mean, next to the very complex and technical construction with a three-part case plus a crown protection we choose for very refined finishing and this finishing consists of surfaces that are set in finished brushed and uh, polished edges these edges really define the sculptural character of the product and and underline also the incredible precision of all the components so what we uh, do here is, is not only creating a finishing that is so much more advanced and so much more elaborate mm -hmm. than what uh, we, we were capable of doing in the past, especially in the 70s, but we also give a much higher value perception to these pieces and make this a proper premium automatic watch. And this is also what we designed this watch for, to sit in our collection as a, as a complementary offer. And the integrated design of the engineer, uh, together with this high perceived value, um, will nicely complement what we have on any other collection. Thank you so much. Well, that was the Engineer 40, the new watch from IWC, and it looks really good, I think. Personally, I'm crazy about luxury sports watches, and this really fits into the category. The finishing, everything, the proportions, it looks absolutely awesome I think. Well let me hear what you think of the watch down in the comments below and hope to catch you for the next video.